Hey everybody, GC13 here. Stop me if you've heard this one before. A rookie cop fresh out of the academy and ready to take on the world, by the book, is paired up with a grizzled veteran of the force who stopped caring what the book said years ago. Well, meet Sieve, rookie Fleck as of the chrome car, and Mace's partner. But there's an interesting twist to this story. Sieve and Mace aren't protagonists, they're antagonists. So the outcome of this experiment is way unpredictable. Well, I mean, mostly, anyway. It's true, though. Since Infinity Train never follows Sieve as a main character, he necessarily walks a different path than if any chapter of the show were about him. Let's take a look at his journey, shall we? When we're first introduced to Mace and Sieve, it's in one of my favorite episodes of Infinity Train, The Chrome Car. Tulip's reflection has stranded her in the mirror world, and One's reflection has called in reflection enforcement to bring her to justice. As soon as he shows up, Sieve starts characterizing himself as the earnest one. He's the first one to speak to Tulip, and while Mace only ever speaks to her to express contempt for non-compliant reflections, Sieve explains Mace's jargon to her. He even overcompensates for Mace's indifference with some patronizing hair strokes that he meant to show he cared. He's more than just the fleck willing to give a prime a smile, though. When Mace orders him to get the sander for their chase of Tulip's reflection, he immediately objects. Siva thought they were going to apprehend her and bring her in alive, but Mace isn't willing to take any chances. As the senior of the pair, Mace sets Sieve straight on the lengths a proper reflection enforcement officer goes to to keep the barrier intact, and as the junior, Sieve steals himself and does his duty, even if he doesn't like it. Thanks to the interference of Tulip, Atticus, and One One, everything goes south, and Mace makes a call that is definitely not by the book. Sieve would proceed into the prime world alone, ignoring the buddy system, while Mace pursued Tulip's reflection in the mirror world. Sieve was definitely not confident, but again, he did what he was told. Unfortunately for the Fleck, the rogues had a head start on him, and damage to a suit caused by Atticus meant he couldn't follow them out of the car. We don't see Mace and Sieve again until the second season, still hot on MT's heels. They've been chasing her for a couple of months at this point, and Sieve has come a long way towards being the officer Mace wants him to be. He's wielding his own sander now, and he's even taking swings at MT. When they follow her into the next car, he puts on a big display of bravado to impress Mace. There's no escape, Sliver. We got you cornered. And I just love cutting corners. Mace is less than impressed. Still, it was a sign that Steve had progressed in his growth as a fleck. Rather than being surprised by the brutality he was being asked to inflict, by golly, he was going to be just the most brutal fleck ever. With a speech like that, it was clear he was only affecting a brutal exterior, pretending to be what he really wasn't. But it's just a first step. Given long enough to pretend, he would eventually come to just be. It's actually kind of a shame that Sieve felt the need to pretend to be Mace, because he wasn't a bad fleck himself. When MT was barricaded inside the toad car, he was able to pull off a convincing good cop routine on Jesse, even if he wasn't able to put the same warmth into it anymore like when he tried it on Tulip. But that's not the route his career took. No, soon after the toad car, the leader of the Apex sicked the flex on MT. The resulting chase ended with Mace dead, and Sieve did not take that well. I'm not taking you anywhere. I'm taking you out. You killed Mace. No more badges. No more protocol. If it hadn't been for the amazing Alan Dracula, Sieve would have earned his first kill, right there. As it happened though, Alan Dracula sent him to be with Mace, in that big fun house in the sky. So yeah, how many buddy cop stories give one of their characters that progression? Starting as a wide-eyed rookie, slowly being shaped into an unfeeling bludgeon for the state? and ending his life as a grief-stricken killing machine. Which Sieve do you think was more effective? Do you think he was better off playing good cop for Mace? Or would they have been more effective if they had always been bad cop and bad cop? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more cartoon videos.